Welcome to this eLearn Security video training lesson on Multigo. In this video, we will see how we can use Multigo in order to uncover several pieces of information about a target domain, which in our case will be www.elsefoo.com. In order to start our investigation, let's open up Multigo. Multigo is a very powerful tool that allows us to perform several actions in order to gather and link information about organizations, websites, servers, and even humans. Multigo has two main scanning options. The first option is automatic, while the second is completely manual. Before seeing them, it's important to know two terms that we're going to use in this video, machines and transform. Machines are Multigo programs or scripts that allow us to extract several bits of information from the web and internet. Such information may vary as Multigo gives the ability to choose between the severity of the information that's being extracted. For example, we can extract information about people from public databases or get information about domains and websites. But this will perform several and sometimes noisy actions. Transforms are programs or scripts that convert information to other information linked to the previous one. For example, we can get domain names from websites which can return IPs, net blocks, and more. Once Multigo runs, it asks to select one of the built-in scans. In other words, it asks to select a machine to use. It's important to know that some machines are more intrusive than others, but they will return more results and will require more time to run. In order to understand how the tool works, we won't use the machines. Instead, we will make our own searches using Multigo Transforms. Let's start by clicking on the upper left white icon, which will open a new project. This will prompt us an empty white graph with a palette menu on the left. Here, we can specify where to start our investigation. In other words, we have to choose our target. As we are targeting a website, the website option is what we're going to use. The other options available on this list vary. For example, we can choose to target an IP address, a DNS name by using the DNS name preference, or even specify a whole IP net block by using the net block option. Other options are also available, like the NS, MX record, single URL, and much more. Now that we have our starting point in the graph pane, we just need to double click on the object in order to change our target site and set our own. For this example, we will use www.elsefoo.com. Also notice that in the top tabs of the window, we can set further information, such as attachments, notes, but also enable or disable SSL and change the default port. For now, let us leave these options as they are and close the windows. Now that we have our starting point, we can see all the available transforms for this object by right-clicking on the website icon. Also notice the panel available on the right. This will display information for every entity we select. For example, if we click on the website icon, we can see all the details on the right. This is very useful and will be used on future transforms to get more information about the object we will resolve. As we said before, transforms are queries that we can use to enumerate and gather information about a specific object. They are well organized depending on the purpose of the transform. For example, we can tell Multigo to run DNS-related transforms, work on links contained in the website, or resolve the IP address of the object. The first and most useful transform to use in order to broaden our choices menu is a DNS transform. This will resolve our website to a DNS record. In order to execute it, we can right-click on the ElseFoo website icon and choose the To Domain DNS transform. Also notice, that we can display a brief description of the transform by moving the mouse over its name, while we can configure each transform by clicking on the small icon on the right. Let's now run the specific transform by clicking on the play icon or on the transform name. As we can see, the bottom panel prints all the outputs and the operations that Multigo runs, such as info messages, errors, warnings, and so on. Once the transform is done, a new object appears on the graph pane. As we can see, it is different from the previous one since it is a domain object. Notice that different objects indicate different entities, and thus, they offer different transforms. Moreover, we can see that the two are linked together. Multigo will automatically link each new object to the one that generated it. Before inspecting this new object, let's run another transform on the website. 
For a better view of the website's architecture, let us execute an IP transform. This action returns the IP of the server hosting the website. Here again, we can see that this is a different object. Thus, we can run different transforms and operations on it. A fundamental step during the information gathering phase with Multigo is to gain all the available emails that can be found on the website. When using the email address transform, Multigo performs a Google Dort query that will return the email addresses found on the website. Here we can see Multigo is able to find three email addresses. From the Detail View section, we can see the location where this email address was found. In this case, they are linked to the Contact Us page of our target. Please keep in mind that such information is very important as it can be used for future attacks such as social engineering. By inspecting the last email address detail, we can see that it has been found in a file called products.docx, hosted on the target website. As you can imagine, this document may contain important information, so by clicking on View, we can save this file for further details on the next phases of our pen test. It's also important to keep a full and detailed list of all the valuable information gathered on the target website. For now, let's say that our investigation on the website object is done and it's time to move on to the domain entity discovered before. As we can see, most of the transforms here are different from the transforms we saw before. This happens because depending on the object, we can get different information via different techniques. For example, here we can run transforms to get data from who is, DNS query, search engines, and much more. One of the first transforms that we can run on a DNS object is a zone transfer. We already know that the domain allows zone transfer, so if we run it, we should be able to obtain a good amount of information. Multigo gives us this option by using the Domain to DNS Zone Transfer Transform. As a result, our DNS object is now linked with all the available zone transfer records returned. In wider networks, and not just small websites, it is highly suggested to also query the DNS results one by one. Since we obtain most of the information via the zone transfer, we will not dig deeper. Instead, we will take a further look to the available emails. This time, we will tell Multigo to search email addresses by using a search engine, and we will run this transform against the DNS entity. As a result, Multigo will find and link all the publicly available email addresses related to this target. From the Detail View menu, we can see that some of these email addresses were found in a PowerPoint presentation. Another useful option we can use is the file search. This time, Multigo will use search engines in order to find files that are stored on the target site or that are somehow linked to it. As we can see, we have found a few documents. Remember to store them for further investigation. For example, you can use tools such as FOCA to extract and analyze their metadata. Another very useful transform we can run is called phone number. This can either use who is information or execute queries on search engines in order to find available phone numbers of the target organization. Information like phone numbers may be useful to mount social engineering attacks. Let us now take a step back and inspect the IP object discovery at the very beginning from the website transform. We can use this object to find the net block associated to the IP address. This will help us on further tests because it may reveal other websites or components on the same net block. As we can see, the block size is 256, meaning that the network can host up to 255 hosts. Moreover, we can also perform a lookup and find all the DNS servers listed on this net block. To do this, Multigo uses some publicly available tools, ServerSniff and Robtex. This is also known as Reverse DNS Lookup. The transformation used here is called DNS Names in NetBlock. We've already gathered several useful bits of information, 
At this point, it should be clear enough the difference between the several objects and the links between them. As Multigo pays attention to the graph view, we are also able to change our graph and use a hierarchical graph instead. This will list the findings according to their hierarchical power. Round schemes and other options are also available, so we can choose them wisely depending on our needs. One of the simplest forms Multigo can present the data in is an entity list. Here, there will be no graph. Instead, the information will be listed by type. Notice that we can perform transforms even from here. For example, let us select a DNS object and use an IP transform to find its mapping IP. As we can see on the main view, it has been successfully linked to our previously found IP. Another handy option that Multigo offers is the ability to select multiple objects. For example, we can choose some of our DNS objects and execute transforms only on these selected items. As we can see, all the DNS names and name servers resolve into the same IP. This is very useful because it gives us an idea of how the network structure of the target is. Finally, we will query the DNS server previously found and get the IP and all the domains available there. As we can see, there are two other available domains. Now that we have a basic overview of our target, we can exit Multigo and save the output for later examination. As you've seen, Multigo provides a very good amount of information, so be sure to inspect and analyze it. Further analysis may also be necessary. For example, we should inspect the files gathered before. Multigo is a very powerful tool and we highly encourage you to use it during your information gathering phase. The way Multigo is able to gather and organize information is something unique. Thanks very much for joining us.